the Bufoj 4mm L70 is now over 70 years old. Despite advancements in missile technology, many countries still rely on it for point air defense. As unmanned aerial vehicles and kamikaze drones gain prominence, can this good old son of a gun still offer a solution? As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the 40mm L70 and seeking answers to this question. The Bufoj 40mm L70 is a long-standing anti-aircraft gun. Many countries have already replaced it with missiles, while others intend to substitute it with laser weapons. Nevertheless, the ongoing quest for a cost-effective solution to modern aerial threats might give the L70 a new lease on life. The earlier Bufoj 40mm L60 became one of the most popular and widely used medium-weight anti-aircraft guns during the Second World War. However, it was insufficient against new threat posed by jet aircraft. Bufoj, today's BAE systems buffers, began the development of the L60's predecessor in the mid-1940s. To deal with jets, the new AA gun would need an extended range and a higher rate of fire. Compared to the L60, the fruit of this project, the L70, featured a long barrel, double cooling vents on the jacket and a larger chamber to fire more powerful cartridge. The new round was slightly lighter and had much higher muzzle velocity. The L70 was fitted with a new loading tray and ejector, which nearly doubled the rate of fire. The first prototype was produced in 1947. The Swedish Armed Forces commenced trials one year later and accepted the gun into service in 1951. Alongside Sweden, the L70 was manufactured under license by France, India, Italy, Norway, Spain and the UK and several of these countries continue to produce it. The L70 consists of two main models, Type A and Type B. The first is fed from an external power source, while the second features a three-phase 220V 50Hz auxiliary power unit mounted at the rear of the carriage. The Type A weighs 4,800kg, whereas the Type B has a weight of 5,150kg. Two ready-to-use ammunition racks, each holding 48 rounds, are located at the rear of the gun platform. An ammunition supply party feeds these racks from outside. Two loaders on each side of the gun feed the L70 via four round clips to the feed guides by the automatic loading device. An ammunition stay placed on top of the automatic loading device, which serves as a magazine, can provide the feeding. It allows 26 rounds to be fired without a loader crew. The recuperator spring encircles the rear part of the barrel, which has a flush suppressor. They are easily exchangeable. The L70 has a hydraulic recoil buffer. The breech mechanism incorporates a vertically sliding breech block, which opens and closes automatically. The elevation and traverse are electrohydraulic. The maximum elevation speed is 45 degrees per second, while the maximum traverse speed is 85 degrees per second. Different fire control radars, such as the Skyguard, Draft or Flycatcher can drag the L70 to the target. The AA gun also features manual controls for emergency use. The L70 has two model NIFE SRS-5 close range sights, one for the elevation layer and one for the traversing layer. In local control, one person on the left side of the platform operates the gun via a joystick. The L70's original production variant fired 240 rounds per minute but this figure has increased to 300 and 330 in later production and upgraded versions. The gun fires two second bursts of 10 rounds. The empty cartridge cases are ejected toward the end of the recoil by being deflected into a chute at the front of the mounting. The L70's maximum firing range is 12,500 meters. The 40mm L70 is operated by a crew of 4 to 6 personnel. Its barrel length is about 2.8 meters. The weight of the AA gun is 4,800 kilograms. In its traveling position, the 40mm L70 has a length of 7.29 meters, a width of 2.23 meters and a height of 2.35 meters. The barrel can be depressed and elevated from minus 4 degrees to plus 90 degrees. The turret can perform a full 360 degree rotation. It has a firing rate of 240 rounds per minute. The effective range of the 40mm L70 lies between 3,000 to 4,000 meters. Over the past 70 years, many countries have executed modernization programs for their L70 inventories. We will mention only the major ones. 
For example, Bufosh developed the Bufosh Optronic Fire Control Instrument, or BOFI, a package designed for the Type B variant. The BOFI comprises integrated computer-based fire control equipment that calculates the aim angles to the target. It also features a laser rangefinder to accurately determine the target's distance. The company also supplies the BOFI all-weather gun system package, which includes a multi-sensor fire control system employing a J-band pulse Doppler radar that provides the system with all-weather operation and automatic acquisition and tracking capabilities. The radar sensor functions in movement target indication mode during target acquisition and automatically switches to frequency agility in tracking mode, significantly enhancing tracking accuracy. The radar sensor can be supported by electro-optics for tracking supervision or it can employ noise tracking using radar for angular tracking and laser for ranging. The BOFI variants can fire proximity fused ammunition. The Netherlands, which retired the AA gun, modernized its L70s in the 1980s with a new service system, amplifiers, ammunition rack, and a diesel power unit. These enhancements increased the rate of fire to 300 rounds per minute. Spain, also a former operator of the AA gun, upgraded its L70s by integrating the Felis Electro Optic Automatic Tracking System. Another country that retired the L-70, Singapore, developed the 40mm L-70 Field Air Defense Mount variant in 1994. This version featured an electric drive aiming system utilizing brushless motors to achieve high tracking and aiming accuracy with a quicker reaction time. It had a 101 round dual compartment 40mm magazine and an on-mount optronic fire control system with a forward-looking infrared. Its rate of fire was 330 rounds per minute. The Italian Automelara company has also developed an automatic feeding device for the 40mm L70, which increases the rate of fire from 240 to 300 rounds per minute. In 2014, India began upgrading its L70s with an electric turret drive system and a digital fire control system. The modernized guns have also been fitted with thermal imaging cameras, laser rangefinders, muzzle velocity radars, and automatic target tracking capability under all weather conditions. They have been equipped with ZADS Electronic Warfare Suite to detect and suppress drones from 10 to 10,000 meters. Let's look at some L70 based AA guns. The Italian Automelara company, which holds the L70 production license, developed a fully automatic field mounting version of its twin 40L70 naval AA gun. It features a magazine that holds 444 rounds and has a rate of fire of 900 rounds per minute. Taiwan has also developed the advanced T-92 with Singaporean technical support. As of 2025, this AA gun has yet to be accepted for service. The Swedish Luftwaffe Kanon 1 9040, shortly LVKV 9040, is a self-propelled anti-aircraft variant that integrates the CV-90 tracked armored vehicle, the L-70 gun, and related electronics. The Serbian Passar 16 self-propelled anti-aircraft gun, built on the FAP 2026 BSAV six-wheel drive track, also utilizes the L-70. The STRV 103 based VEAK 4062, the Volvo 725 6x6 track based 40mm Tridon, the AMX 13 based AMX 13 DCA 40, and the M48 based M247 Surgeon York are non-serial self-propelled variants of the L-70. The Trinity turret with an L-70 was tested on the Muvak Shark 8x8 armored vehicle. The L-70 is also the main armament of the Swedish CV-9040s and the South Korean K-21s. Besides, numerous warships have been equipped with the L-70. Let's begin analyzing the L-70s past. Although it was accepted as the NATO standard in 1953, the L-70 never achieved the same popularity as the L-60. Why? The developments during the Second World War, particularly the emergence of jets, enabled the creation of the L-70. Conversely, other factors impeded its success. Air superiority on the Western Front secured victory for the Allies, shaping Western doctrines as a result. A capable air force that could prevent enemy aircraft from flying made land-based air defense systems secondary. Consequently, when the First Cold War arose, Western doctrines prioritized aircraft over anti-aircraft guns. Furthermore, following the Second World War, a substantial surplus of L-60s was available to provide to new allies. Missiles also emerged during the Second World War. 
This new weapon offered improved accuracy and a longer range, rendering anti-aircraft guns obsolete. Unlike the L60, the L70 faced a formidable competitor, the Erlikon GDF. The GDF, which incorporated newer technologies, featured twin 35mm guns, resulting in a higher rate of fire. Moreover, despite its 5mm smaller caliber, it was similar to the L70 in effectiveness. These facts have made the L70 less successful in the market than the L60. Let's begin our analysis of the L70's future. Recent conflicts, particularly the Second Karabakh War and the Russo-Ukrainian War, have revealed the growing threats of unmanned aerial vehicles. Modern armies cannot effectively deal with such systems. The alternatives are missiles, laser weapons and good old guns. The missiles are highly effective yet somewhat expensive. They are unsuitable for a prolonged conflict. Laser weapons are still in their infancy and are also costly. The world needs time to make them workable and cost-effective. Many might argue that guns appear outdated at first glance. However, using modern munitions, they can still play crucial roles against unmanned aerial vehicles and they do so at lower costs. A modernized L70 can fire the 40mm PFHE Mark II and 3P munitions. Named after the initials pre-fragmented high explosive, the PFHE Mark II features a proximity fuse with an effective range of up to 6,500 meters against aircraft and 4,500 meters against missiles. It can reach a distance of 1,000 meters in 1.1 seconds and 3,000 meters in 4.44 seconds. The PFHE Mark II contains 650 tungsten carbide pellets which provide a penetration capability of approximately 14 mm of duralumin. The projectile's bow tail design enhances large fragment dispersion, consequently creating a kill zone with a substantial diameter and an extended range. Named after the initials pre-fragmented programmable proximity fuse, the 3P features enhanced aerodynamic characteristics and improved shot grouping. Its programmable electronic detonator offers six operational modes, each customized for individual projectiles and set within the charging mechanism just before firing. Thus, the PFHE Mark II and 3P are highly effective against kamikaze drones, modern guided air-to-surface munitions, cruise missiles, artillery rockets and even mortar shells. In our previous video, we discussed the Bufoch 40 Mark IV used on naval vessels and its potential land-based variant which may provide new opportunities. The Bufoch 40 Mark IV can engage a target with the 3P munition in under 0.5 seconds after detection. A few months after removing our video, the BAE Systems Buffers unveiled the Bufoch 40 Mark IV L. We might humbly say that great minds think alike. The Russo-Ukrainian war has demonstrated that missiles are pretty effective against modern air threats. However, they are costly and take longer to produce which has led to supply issues. Rising global tension raises the question, does the world have enough time to wait for laser weapons to mature and become affordable? The L-70 with its modern munitions can eliminate such handicaps. The 70-year-old girl and other medium-caliber AA guns have the potential to be the solution in this new era, of course with some improvements. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.